you today with another programming uh, practice problem. Let me just set up my chat so I can see the chat. Oops. And we'll get hop right into it. There we go. Alrighty. So today we're going to be looking at uh, too much volume there. Uh, reversing a linked list. Uh, leak code 206. This is a leak code easy. Um, and basically we're just going to reverse a singly linked list. That, that's all there is to it. Um, this is an easy, but if you don't understand the concept of linked lists, that, that obviously makes it very, very difficult. Uh, so let's go ahead and review that. Uh, there's a list node, so definition for a singly linked list. Uh, we init, uh, each node has a value and it has a next. Now this is a singly linked list. Uh, you may remember if you tuned in for the LRU cache, uh, that used the doubly linked list, which each node had a previous and a next. Now we just have a next. And let's just go to the big board. So you'll see these often. We'll maybe have uh, represented this way. One, two, and three. And this three will also have a Hey, Lavender JMK, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, this will also have a next, uh, but in Python, we'll just call that a none. And that's how we know we're done with our linked list. So um, for this problem, we want to reverse this linked list. So we go 1 to 2 to 3. Now we want to go uh, 3 to 2 to 1. So content of linked lists, we only have each node's value and that it points to the next node. So if you think about this, okay, well, can I just go from one to two to three and then I start at the end and then reverse it that way? Well, that, that approach doesn't really work because when we get to three, there's no way, it's not doubly linked, right? There's no previous, I can't see the two, I forget all about that. So I can't just go from three and then reverse it that way. So then you have to think a little bit, okay, well, What's a different approach? How can I kind of go about this uh, from the start of the list? Well, basically, you have your node, and then you can say, well, instead of pointing to this next, to the number two node, I can just, hey, Pulse, thanks for stopping in today. Uh, I can take this first node and then point it to the previous. But then you also have an issue, right? Because now, and then we would call this none, right? Now I'm like I'm kind of no man's land. I don't have this um, this concept of the two. I can't get to the next one. So how do we get around that? Well, we just we just use a temp variable. Um, so we we store access uh, to this node, and that's basically the um, the nougat of of the problem. Once we we understand that kernel of truth, um, then we can uh, re really go after uh, solving it. So we're gonna use. Um, a current, a previous, and a temp variable. And we're going to walk through it this way. And I'm also going to do the solution iteratively and recursively um, to show you two different approaches. Um, so let's go back in time and go to the, um, yeah, to the start of the problem. So if we're here, we can set like a previous which will will just be none, um, so that'll that'll be set. So we have a previous, and then we have a current. At the start, we're going to say, okay, let me let me keep in mind this temp right here. That's where we're going to be going to, um, and then let's reassign uh, where we're currently pointing to to the previous. So. This, this current will now lo no longer point to 2, it'll, it'll, it'll point to the 1, excuse me, it'll point to the none. Um, and then all we have to do is then shuffle. Then we move the previous to the, uh, where the current is. So that's no longer there. This temp becomes the current. And then we just follow the same the same step. Then we reassign our next to where we were after we we got a temp, 
and then we shuffle again, and then we go on, on down the line. You can see that'll, that'll eventually reverse our length list. So let's put pen to paper in Python and uh, code out a solution. So like we said, uh, we're going to have a current that'll be with the head to start. Um, we want to assign a previous of none uh, as well. And actually, let me just take a quick sip of water here as I'm a little parched. And when are we going to be done? Well, when we get to that last point, when our, our current is no longer uh, viable, like when, when it's no longer has a value. So we can say, well, current does not equal none. That's when we want to stop. And this is all we have to do. And I really like these next four lines of code. Uh, we have a temp that is occur.next, so that's where we're grabbing that, that temp value right here. Then the occur.next becomes the previous. So if we go back over here, it, let's say we're starting at step two uh, out of the, the three link, link list. So we have the current, we have the temp now set, then the occur.next will be the previous. And then we just shuffle the previous and the, the current to the next thing. So you see the previous will become the current, and then the current will become the temp. I really like these last, these last four lines of code um, because you see everything that we're, um, so we're so assigning a temp, everything that's being assigned becomes, how do I say, basically everything on the right becomes on the, on the, on the, the next left. So think about that. Everything that we're assigning to something will be ne assigned next. And then it, it also cycles on itself. So this is, I really like these, these four lines of code. So we have the temp. It becomes where the next we're looking next. Um, then next becomes the previous. We overwrite that. Then the previous shifts over one to the current, and the current becomes the temp. And then we just walk down the line. So then you might think, okay, we're going to return the current. That's not actually the case because when we get to the current, when we break out of the loop, that's none. We, if we want to point from the three to the two to the one, we actually need to return the previous. So let's go ahead and um, submit this solution and then hope, hopefully that it's A-OK -okay, and then we'll move on to a recursive solution approach. Hey, uh, LOL Smelly Cheese, thanks for stopping it. Okay, good. We saw that we have um, an iterative solution. This is um, of linear time complexity, right? We have to visit every node in, in the list, and you're never going to be faster than that, right? And it's constant time space complexity. We're not keeping anything um, in, in memory other than the temp, but that, that's constant time. And we see that we're 87.92% uh, of Python submissions, so a reasonably quick solution. All right. Oh, what's uh, LOL Smelly Cheeses? What's your, what's your question? Maybe, perhaps you can answer it. I'm going to comment out this solution. And basically, we're going to do the same thing, but with a recursive solution. Um, just to basically hammer home some points behind recursion. And LOL smelly cheeses, whenever you're ready to ask that question in the chat, we'll uh, see if I can help, help answer it. Okay, so we start off with the same way, uh, where we have a class solution, which is an object, and we have a reverse list. But this time, we're going to use a non-public uh, method, which we denote with using a underscore. And we're going to call that on head. So this is going to be uh, what we what recursively calls itself. So reverse underscore reverse will take self and current and this is a fun thing you can do in Python uh, we'll take previous but you see up here we didn't actually um, it's not part of the function signature so how, how, how can we say well how can you get to the previous if we were for doing it hmm so lol smelly cheeses how do I use a function from another file uh, if you're using node.js um, you will use 
Uh, in JavaScript, you'll use something called module.exports, um, and you'll export those functions, and then you can go ahead and then require them into um, a separate uh, a separate uh, function. But which programming language are you using to... Oh, in Python? Um, to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm mostly used to... Uh, Well, let's let's go ahead and take a look. We have a little bit of time here, so let's go to the bastion of all all knowledge, Stack Overflow. Uh, import function from other file, Python. I want to make sure I don't steer you steer you wrong here. So here's how to import other Python files. So there's import file that pi. This guy's asking the question. So import lib is a recent addition in Python to programmatically import a module. It's, it's just a wrapper around import. So this is the more recent. This is a way to import a module. But I think, yeah, but without getting too distracted, um, if you just do a stack overflow Google search for that, um, I think uh, you'll you'll get a, a nice answer. It's going to use, here, let's just check one more. Yeah, so here's the vernacular that I've, that I've seen from filepy import function AB. Yeah, from file import and then call the function using the function. So I think that's that's what you're going to be wanting to wanting to do that. Yeah, let me know if that works out. Uh, smelly cheeses. Uh, so let's just hop right back into this uh, reverse. So, yep. Yeah, what's what's fun about this this problem is that recursively you can write it very very similar to the iterative iterative solution. Yep. Yeah. And uh, just a heads up, if you do Stack Overflow, that's, you know, as a software engineer, that's uh, <laughs> where I spend most, most of my day, or at least a, a lot of my day looking for questions like that. They usually have some, uh, some good answers there for you. Okay, so before we broke out of this while loop, the current equal, uh, doesn't equal node, none. By the way, we don't have to not equal none. We can just write while current. That also works. Um, now here, with the recursive solution, we want to get to a base case. So when we get to that end, we want to re re return and then go up the, the call stack. So another way to do that is, well, this one's while current, but we can just say if not current, so if the current is none, then we just return the previous. So this, this is like kind of taking up that at, at the end of the while loop. So that's, the, that's our base case. So now the next the next two lines are going to be exactly the same. So we're going to say in our recursive solution, temp equals uh, cur dot next and cur dot next equals previous. So this is getting that that temp value and then pointing back to the to the last node. So then we're going to do a return. And then all we're going to do now is keep in, uh, in mind what our reverse is. So our reverse has, has our current and our pre... Oop, I got distracted. Um, we don't have a, a previous setup here. So, <laughs> yep, Stack Overflow is love, Stack Overflow is life, for sure. Um, but if we don't have anything set in that function signature, if we just go ahead and call that none, if we don't give that, then that, that's what the value will be assigned. So then we just do a recursive uh, function call. And we will think, okay, well, what's what should become the current? What did it become uh, the current up here? Well, that was temp. We want to move one down the line. And then this one, uh, what becomes the previous? Well, that became what we were currently looking at. So that's the current. So this is basically the exact same solution, um, just recursively written. So let's go ahead and submit that and see what happens. I have to take a quick swig. And good, we see that it's, it, it's accepted. Um, 
and I think it might be interesting to kind of kind of kind of walk down uh, the solution of what happens uh, when we do the um, the recursive call, and it's it's basically the same, it's very similar to the iterative, but we have uh, a call stack. So we have a one, a two, a three, and we have a none where we end up. So it's one, two, three, we want to end up with three, two, one. Um, so we first return the self uh, reverse of the head. We have uh, one, two, three. We say temp equals the current dot next, so this becomes the temp. And the current dot next becomes the previous, which is set to none at the start. So this goes away. That's after we check if not current return previous. And then we return a self dot reverse of the uh, current becomes the, or we assign the temp to the current, so this temp goes away. And this becomes prev. Similarly, we have the temp here, and then this cur dot next gets pointed back here. And then we go to the next thing. So then uh, the temp, this temp over here becomes the current again. This cur becomes the prev. And then this becomes the temp. And similarly, uh, the cur.next becomes the prev. And then, and this is where we get to the base case, the temp becomes the cur, the cur becomes the prev, and we say, then we finally hit the line 26, if not cur return previous. We see that we hit none, and then we just go all the way back, three, two, one, previous, and then we, we reversed it. Um, so this is time complexity. Complexity is still linear time complexity, uh, similar to the iterative solution. Uh, but now we have to keep in mind that all those returns, all those recursive calls, so now we actually um, uh, decrease the efficiency. We have uh, linear space complexity uh, for this solution um, for a recursive one. But I think it was just a little, a little interesting way to show a recursive way this, this uh, can work uh, iteratively and, and, and vice versa. So with all that said, this was uh, leak code number 206, reverse linked list. Uh, a nice little intro to uh, linked list. Might have been good to do that before the uh, LRU cache, which is like a pretty heavy duty use of it. But a, a fun little problem with a couple of different ways to look at it. This was Programmer Mitch uh, stopping in every Sunday at two, uh, excuse me, at 6.30 p.m. doing a quick programming problem. Hope to see you next Sunday, and uh, I'll catch you later.